I'm really excited to have Himanshu Mahindra here from Twilio, who again is a Make More Hustle Less Club member. How do you turn something like your calendar into a fun game you get to play every day? That's what we're going to be deconstructing here. And the reason I love this one is because we're taking a ubiquitous tool like the calendar, we're layering in design thinking, taking a human center problem, and then working backwards of figuring that out. And the best way to apply design thinking is using universal frameworks. Then combine that with systems thinking. So you solve a problem, you designed the solution. How do you implement that? And you can implement that through effective systems. And that's personalized through personal reflection and experimenting along the way. And it really becomes a daily journey. Of course, all of this is underpinned by being highly intentional. So we're all focusing on being purposeful performers here as revenue creators. Brandon, first of all, thank you for inviting me. So it's a pleasure being here. I got my bachelor's degree, computer systems engineering, a master's in electronics, and then an MBA as well. I began life as an engineer, but then I moved to a couple of things, revenue generation, which is top line, and then also operations focused bottom line. I began life with selling solutions to cross automation space from my time at Honeywell, moving to supply chain when I was at Aspen Technologies, moving to ERP with Infor, uh, financial systems when I was at Workday, and then CRM, Salesforce, and then now to solutions where customers are interacting with brands. So capturing that data to provide personalized interactions, which is what I'm doing here at Twilio segment. Obviously you discovered seven steps, seven figures, but Beyond some of the stuff I was putting out there, what drove you to want to scratch that curiosity a little bit more and want to work together on a more recurring basis? Yeah. So I'll ask that question in two parts. One was what intrigued me, first of all. And secondly, what I felt was your competitive differentiator versus all the other content that I saw out there. So what immediately got my attention, as I suspect is true for everybody probably here, was your attainment um, in sales, your seven-figure W2s, multiple years in a row. But really, as far as I was concerned, what your competitive differentiator was, your human first and seller second approach, mm. which strongly resonated with me because I've never really liked hacks. I always felt they smacked of manipulation and it just didn't sit very well with me, didn't really talk to the seller that I wanted to be. Your focus on being human first and seller second got my attention. And then... You just called it out, but being an engineer and a process improvement guy, I was drawn to your design and systems thinking approaches, which really resonated with me. And then last, but certainly not least, Brandon, we're both fellow introverts. And so that really intrigued me that you achieved your success by being human first, employing design thinking, all the while being introverted like me. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. We used to think of the sales role as you have to be an extrovert, but more and more the research is showing that ambiverts or even more introverted leaning sellers perform better, especially the higher you climb in your sales career and get into more enterprise and strategic accounts. Just to give you kudos, since we've started working together, what you've been promoted, right? To a more strategic division at Twilio in segments, gotten a pay raise, been handed some pretty amazing strategic accounts, and you closed the biggest deal on your team recently. Thank you. This was pretty much how my life was run before I came across Brandon's content. And it's a calendar that represents the usual state, the before state, if you will. And this is life for a lot of sellers, actually, where the calendar is just being used at this point just to record what meetings you're going to go into, both internal meetings, external meetings. And really, that's about it. So this would be the case come, say, Monday morning. And then the calendar is changing throughout the week as it always does. And so what I was finding was that by the time I got to Wednesday, Thursday, all the things I had on my to-do list around these meetings wouldn't happen because people were scheduling new meetings. They were scheduling new touch points and so on and so forth. So I found my day getting very fragmented and having half an hour here and half an hour there and just really wasn't a good recipe for me in terms of just wanting to get stuff done. And this come Friday afternoon, 
there'd be a panic about, oh, I didn't get through all my list. I've got a one-on-one -on -one with my manager coming up on Monday. How am I going to explain that type of thing, right? Hopefully this is not a scenario that is alien to a, what a lot of sellers face. So completely reactive and not good for my mental health, basically. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to take control of my calendar because I realized a couple of things about myself, the way I like to work, which is that I don't like meetings in the mornings. I want to use those to get HVAs done, high value activities, all the things that either bring new deals into your pipeline or they're moving existing deals towards close. And so I knew I wanted to block off the mornings to do the highest impact stuff first. I also know that I like to use like big blocks of activity. Like for example, if I'm prospecting, now different people may be different. For me, if I want to do prospecting, I do better with a one, two, a two hour block, which is just prospecting. Who am I going to go after? What's the messaging in that sort of two hour time frame? So again, with that previous before state, that wasn't really possible. To go with my day, I used Brandon's concept of D, F, C, and as well as Brandon's prep concept to form the basis of my calendar. Here's a typical blank week, way into the future. So if we look at each individual day, focus time in the mornings, early bird, do my best work there. I want that to be reserved for HVAs. If a meeting is scheduled for a morning, unless it's mandatory or it's a customer call, which couldn't be scheduled any other time, I'll decline or propose a new time to meet. Each day, I close with time to reflect and learn and schedule meetings and follow-ups. So there's the D for the beginning, the stuff that I want to get done, the middle for the F, the stuff that gets scheduled, and the reflections at the end, the day for the, for the C, what worked, what didn't work, what can I do differently next time. So I'll also take the last slot to plan and schedule future activity, meetings, follow-ups, and those kind of things. So this helps me close the books on the day and go with, be with my family 100%. Because in the before state, what was happening was that because I was so much in rumination about my to-do list, I really wasn't able to be with my family 100% in the evenings, or on the weekends, the, my mind was just churning about what to do kind of thing. So this speaks to PREP across the week. Looking at the week as well, I block off Fridays entirely. Um, these are for planning, meeting prep, enablement, admin, that sort of thing. And Mondays, I generally reserve for what I call operational meetings. So here's where I have my one-on-one -on -one syncs with my manager, my team members, like solution engineers, SDRs, and so forth. And so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoons, the F space, as it were, they're for customer meetings, generally. And I've let my SDR know that he's free to schedule meetings of prospects, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and to give me at least 24 hours notice to give time to prep. I said a lot there, and so let me illustrate something through some examples. Here's a fully planned week. So I typically plan a whole week in advance on the previous Friday. So all the activities in purple that you're seeing, they're HVAs. So prospecting, meeting prep, follow-up, all the activities that either bring new deals into your pipeline or move existing deals forward. So you'll notice a couple of things. Mornings are taken up with these. They're happening in blocks of two hours, and they're dominating my calendar. Anything that's non-HVA, I either don't want on my calendar or I want to minimize it. So I also plan each block as well on the previous Friday. So for example, for a prospecting block, it doesn't just say prospecting if you were to double click into it. It's the contacts, who, their title, and what my messaging is going to be. So this way I can go straight into that activity without messing about basically. And again, this is generally why I don't take meetings on Fridays. This level of prep takes research. And what's been beautiful about this transformation I've been able to witness firsthand is how he's been able to find his capacity in going through this process of understanding the amount of blocks he focuses on for high value activities, how many meetings he can get done versus trying to over index on that pressure we all feel as sellers of how many emails went out this week. How many meetings did you run? How many proposals were sent? We're constantly bombarded with activity versus impact. And sometimes that takes deep work. Sometimes that takes slowing down in order to speed up. And it's been amazing seeing Hamanchu's calendar system. I think I can almost feel 
the, the question here is, whoa, wait a second, you're blocking off entire chunks of your week. How is that going to work? Your managers are just going to see a bold, busy block the whole week. And what happens to meetings that need to be scheduled? What happens if things change? Everyone's just going to see busy and my life doesn't work like that. Believe me, I completely get it. That's the reality of my life too. As I mentioned in the setup that I like to work in uninterrupted blocks. I like to work on HVAs. I like to schedule my, plan my week out on the Friday before. So this is what a Monday would look like. And yes, things will change with time. And what I didn't want to see was my management or my SDRs or my SEs or whomever. They look at my calendar and they go, oh my God, he's busy until next Tuesday. What's going on? So what I do to mitigate that, in other words, the way I like to work and to be flexible is that I share my calendar. So my company, my team knows exactly what I'm working on. And of course, there are some events that I'm going to keep private, like some of those yellow events. Those are personal things that I need to take care of. But the HVA blocks, they're public. For example, if my manager wants to book a meeting or an SDR wants to book a call, he knows what I'm working on and he will reach me, reach out to me on Slack and say, Hey, I see you're working on prospecting. Is it okay if I schedule a customer call or if a manager needs to move a one-to-one, -one, they know what I'm working on and they'll move it to an appropriate spot. So that way it cuts out a lot of that whole, he's just available all the time, which I'm not. And also at the same time, I'm not prohibitively busy that people can't work with me. So. Really for me, the fun game that I'm playing is I have color coding for each of for each type of activity. I, the purple was HVAs. The fun game I'm playing is that I'm going to turn everything green like this. All HVAs, they're green, completed. Green as dark green is complete. And as Brandon alluded to earlier on, this is the only dashboard I care about every week. How much of my, how much of my calendar filled with HVAs? How much do I get to green every week? In other words, focusing on the stuff that's in my hands to control. There are, of course, other dashboards like management dashboards. They track activity. And I can say, hand on my heart, that I usually don't score very highly on those. I'm in the middle or towards the bottom usually. But I'm not losing any sleep over that because my management can see my calendar. They know how I'm spending my time. So I've never had to have any awkward conversations around what my activity levels have been. As you ascend and get higher up the chain or the mountain, so to speak, what starts to become more important is actually what you say no to, because you already know what's important. You've already laid out your high value activities. So it starts to be really clear on no, I just, I don't have the capacity. I literally don't have the time capacity for that. I don't have the energy capacity for that. And certainly I don't want to put my attention on these things that are being put on my calendar. And I, one thing I observed in you, Hamachu, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your default is always no on internal meetings. Can you unpack that a little bit more? Yeah, sure. So, you know, first of all, going back to HVAs, prospecting, customer calls, those are obvious HVAs, but there are also other activities that are not so obvious. They're still HVAs. Like for example, prepping for meetings. That in my book is an HVA, because if that doesn't go well, your actual meeting's going to go sideways. So I'll say yes to, and I will actually drive a lot of those sinks myself, getting the team ready for a call. So those kind of meetings I will say yes to, and I'll, I'll plan them strategically. But there are a lot of what I call filler meetings, the ones that look mandatory, but they're actually not. For me, it's those company all hands calls, for example, they're recorded. So if I'm curious enough to want to hear what my CEO said to Wall Street or whatever, I can always go back and play that recording offline in my own time. Same with a lot of these mandatory enablement sessions as well, or lots of enablement sessions. Again, in my book, they're not mandatory because I only want to be enabled on what is useful to me in that moment in time. All those calls are usually recorded or they usually end up on high spot or whatever your system is, they're going to end up somewhere. So you can go and look at that offline when you need that content. So those I would by default say no to.
Another thing that I loved seeing you do is how you themed out your weeks, whether it's a healthcare block for the week, a retail block for the week. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about your thinking behind that? Yeah. Like a lot of sellers, I'm sure we have accounts that are spread across multiple verticals, uh, multiple industries. And so what I found earlier on is that when I was going from one industry to another, that was creating a lot of inefficiencies. So what I did was I just grouped everything. And like you said, like see on the calendar, retail week. So this particular week, I'm going to focus all my prospecting on retail. And so what that does is that it, I can use the same research and assets across several accounts. And so if I fall behind, for example, in one block, I can always catch up in another block. So I just find that it helps drive efficiency if I theme my week versus trying to do everything in a week. Everything is accessible to anyone in your organization that you want to your calendar, but it's been awesome to see how you actually prepare for big meetings with your prospects or your clients and how you pull people into that. You want to unpack that one for everyone? Yeah, sure. Again, uh, earlier in the before state, when it would come to researching for an account, I've got a customer meeting coming up. I've got, I'm going to talk to the CIO of a certain account. I said, what do I say? So every prep was like, I was coming at it like it was brand new. But when you break it down, prep is actually, it's those same things over and over again. Do your account research, what the proof points are going to be, what questions you're going to ask, what are the pain points of that role? And then what type of medic questions do you want to ask to drive your opportunity forward? Those are standard. So what I do is I give myself a block of say two hours or whatever it is to prep for that specific customer meeting on those items, account research, where they're at right now in terms of spend, what are they focused on, what's their strategies, and then proof points and so forth. So I follow the same format for all my prep. And so what I do at the end of it is that I share that with my group, with my team, who's going to be on that call. So I will typically have a sync session with my team prior to the call. And I will, sh I will have shared this content with them before that. And my expectation is that they'll have read that the entire research. So that half hour block for sync, for example, I'm not wasting time with exposition in terms of this is the account, this is the strategy. They get to read it all offline. So we can really focus on the assets that we're going to prepare for that meeting. Here's the PowerPoint deck. Here's what we're going to talk about. What do you think, Joe? And so forth. So it just makes that very much more efficient. And so what I also do as well is I'll copy those notes and I'll plug them right next to the meeting as well on the day. So my team can access those notes as well as have the call open as well. So we're following a script almost. Himanshi is going to ask these questions. Sue will ask those questions and so forth. So it helps us sync in real time. That's a big takeaway for me. I wish I would have incorporated this when I was an active seller. Such a small little thing, but so impactful. I love it. The other thing I want to call out too is you have links in here too to some of your meetings notes. So I, I love, again, a small little detail, but you make it very easy for anybody peeking in. And I know we're not really talking about some of the, the folders you've built in your Chrome at the top, but you really have created that one space for yourself and really it's your calendar where you're living. But on top of your calendar, because it's a Google calendar, you've got Chrome and you've got your sales process. You have your discovery questions, your POV builder. Everything is just one click away. And I love that. That's a, that's a really effective operating system. But also, again, if I'm your manager or I'm your SDR or I am a subject matter expert, supporting you in one of your accounts, I just know I can click in here and get more detail in whatever systems you're, you happen to be using at, at Twilio and Segment. So small little thing, but again, goes very far to make a big impact. What I would say to compound that is that because in, in a sync meeting, Brandon and everyone else, the actual valuable component in that is, okay, what are we going to do now to get ready? And not here's the story. Here's the story, the exposition is a waste. So I just wanted to strip out the waste and get focused on, okay, what are we going to do to get ready for the meeting, given all this information that we have already? Love it. 
Now, let's talk a little bit about one-on-ones. Again, you've taken a unique approach here with your manager and any leaders that you meet with who are asking the horrible question, what have you been up to? You've flipped that and they're no longer asking you that dreaded question. Want to talk a little bit about how you go about your internal meetings with leaders? Yeah. And thanks for building that up, Brandon, because that was a source of real stress for me. And with that before state that we just talked about some slides back, I'm trying to get through my to-do list of meetings and action items that are not on my calendar, but they need to be done. And then I've got my one-on-one coming up with my manager and how am I going to answer that question? What have you been up to? So I basically sharing my calendar. So first of all, they see what I'm up to, all the things that we just, all the slides that we just showed, they see that they can double click into each of those blocks and they can see, okay, these are the prospects he went after. Here's the messaging and so forth. So that takes the sting out of what have you been doing? They can just say, you can see what I've been doing, right? So what I do is at least 24 hours in advance, I'll populate the one-on-one meeting invite with an agenda that here's who I reached out to last week. Here are my HVAs this week. What is my plan? And what are my HVAs this week? So the focus becomes less about what have you been up to versus they can say to you, oh yeah, I see what you did last week. Maybe they might have some suggestions that maybe do this a little differently. Or, hey, I see that you've got your meeting coming up with the CIO at X. How can I help you, Himanshu? So it becomes more about collaborating versus having to explain yourself. Because what have you been doing? That's a question that's very hard to answer for anybody when you have a minute of somebody's time and they're listening to you. It's far better to just take all that stuff off the table and then focus the conversation on the collaboration piece of it. And what I love about this story too, is it just shows how one individual, those of us as individual contributors, those of us who have deliberately intentionally stayed in an individual contributor role because we enjoy our autonomy, can have an impact at a team level and organizational level. You shared a story with me last week around how people now, not just inside your team, though across the org are starting to ask, could this be repeatable with everyone, right? This is a really effective way for us to sort of screen, should we have a meeting here or not? Should I put this on somebody's calendar or not? Do you want to just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Because you know, everything is process driven, everything is public. So people can see what I'm doing. People can see what I'm intending to, to approach my day. So the conversation that you were referring to, Brandon, was that basically how I collaborate with my SDRs. And so my manager was listening in on that conversation and I just broke down, okay, here's the prep for each of these accounts. Here the, here's the account list all in, in Outlook in, in Google. And here's what I want to go after this week. I'd like you to focus on the director level and uh, manager level. I'm going to focus on these contacts and the C level, the EVP level. And, and this is all done with a few clicks on a calendar versus lots of verbiage. And so management on both the SDR side and my side saw a very repeatable process that this could be just done and repeated. And yeah, the other comment was made that, yeah, we should all interact with the SDRs this way. To summarize, I think there were like five key points, at least that I took away as key takeaways. When we looked at that before state, a blank calendar doesn't necessarily mean utopia, actually can be a source of stress. And so by being purposeful, Camacho was able to allocate his time and that gave him a filter before things got put on it without his ability to say yes to it or no to it or have a decision framework for others to decide, should this go on his calendar or not? He removed that stress by actually filling up his calendar. So just something to consider when you take a look at your own calendar after this call. High value activities are not just meetings. Himanshu broke that down for us. When he's planning his upcoming week, he's trying to overfill it with high value activities. And then where he needs to be flexible in the F portion of the day, generally in the middle of the day, he can be flexible. Obviously, it is going to benefit a revenue generator to focus on building your calendar, designing your calendar around those high value activities that drive the revenue. 
prioritize and overfill with those HVAs. Just talked about that. The other thing to always keep in mind is that this was a daily practice for Hamachu. He starts his week, everything in purple for his HVAs. And then it's every day focusing on turning what's purple into green. And then it starts over. The game starts over the next day, but he might be on a different level in, inside that game. So when you zoom out across a year, generally how many of us as enterprise strategic sellers are evaluated, even if you zoom a little further in on a quarterly basis, if you're measured on that, or even a monthly basis, it still comes down to what you do on a daily basis. That defines your success. And the more green days you have, they're going to stack up over the course of a month, a quarter, a year to give you the results. You almost don't even have to focus on the results. You're just focused on playing the game, focusing on the process, focusing on the daily practice. And then the last thing is the scoreboard that matters is the one that you keep for yourself. What are those standards? And as, as we saw from Hamachu, he's made it very interesting for himself. Just turn the board green. That's all I have to worry about. Turn the board green. The end results, you want to calmly and confidently know what to do, why you're doing it, when the best time to do it, who will benefit and enjoy the process of actually doing all that while embracing the natural outcomes and lessons of the process. No stress or high degree of sacrifice required. That's the path of the purposeful performer.